So my name is Dr. Heman Bharkar. I am uh, a modern medicine doctor. Uh, I realized that medicine has reached a point of saturation and the ancient science uh, has a lot of potential that we can explore and offer to humanity in terms of medicine. So therefore, after my MBBS, I decided to do MD in yoga and rehabilitation. And then I went on to do PhD in yoga. Uh, I developed a lot of interest in uh, yoga research where basically uh, I wanted to explore the ancient knowledge and put it into the scientific methodology and then take the best out of it using the best of the East and the best of the West and then come up with the uh, idea of integrative medicine and that is what I am doing here. I am working as senior scientific officer at Nimhans uh, and uh, basically the nature of my work involves uh, applying yoga therapy to patients suffering from various uh, neuropsychiatric disorders and uh, testing the efficacy of yoga as an adjuvant or as a mainline therapy for people suffering from anxiety, depression, stress, uh, even some seriously mentally ill patients uh, suffering from chronic schizophrenia or those having neurological problems like migraine or Parkinson's disease. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Can you speak uh, specifically about any of the studies that you've done uh, with with mantra or nadi yoga and their effects? Yes, so we have done a study here at Nimhans uh, where we assess the effect of chanting the sound Om on the blood flow of the brain using functional magnetic resonance imaging. So in this study, we took uh, 10 healthy volunteers and then uh, we train them in chanting the sound Om uh, so that there is a standard way of chanting the Om when they are under the fMRI scanner. Uh, so the way they chanted was that the O and Ma part should be in the ratio of 1 is to 2 and as a control we took the sound as the control. So the same subjects were in the scanner and then uh, they chanted the Om for 10 cycles, then they chanted the sound for 10 cycles and then they were at rest. Same sequence repeated for 10 times. And then we analyzed the data and what we observed was that when the subjects chanted Om, there was deactivation of the limbic system of the brain, uh, especially the amygdala. We know that amygdala is the primal area of the brain uh, which is associated with uh, the emotions of fear, aggression, negative emotions. So the in yogic language you can say the animal instincts that arise in a human being. So they amygdala can be considered as a center for that. So after chanting the sound Om, the, there was a deactivation of amygdala. It means it received lesser blood flow. So that suggests that that area was calmer after chanting of the sound Om as compared to the sound S. So why we chose S as the control was because we did not want the control to produce any kind of vibratory component in the brain. Uh, secondly, we also wanted to match the breathing rate. So therefore, when they, they did the control intervention, there was the breathing rate was matched and there was no vibratory component. So therefore, this research gave us some preliminary results that uh, chanting home actually has some effects on the deeper brain areas. And uh, then now we are doing a research where uh, we are uh, comparing the sound OM with only the last part of OM, the humming sound M, and then the S chanting. The reason why we are doing this research is whenever we presented this research to different communities in different countries, one peculiar question was asked again and again that if a person doesn't want to chant Om, say because of his socio-cultural background, is there any alternative? So the, the hypothesis was that 
the effect of the om chanting on the brain is probably because of its vibratory component especially there is a vagus nerve it is the ninth cranial nerve and there is a auricular branch of that nerve which goes to the ear so if you chant such sounds which produce vibration in this area then probably the vagus nerve the auricular branch gets stimulated and through that it affects the deeper brain areas so if that is the mechanism then through chanting the sound m mm, also there may be similar effect then humming sound can become an alternative for chanting om so this is what we are exploring right now we have already uh, uh, taken the data on eight subjects we want to do it on 12 more subjects 20 subjects when the data is finished we will do the analysis and we will see what happens that's fantastic yeah we did another research uh, on people suffering from generalized anxiety disorder you know the people who suffer from generalized anxiety they have a free floating kind of anxiety they remain anxious over trivial issues throughout the day so what we did was uh, uh, we used a particular technique uh, there has been publication using the, this technique it is known as mind sound resonance technique basically the technique involves initial rounds of chanting a u ma and then a u ma together followed by chanting of mahamrityunjay mantra so the focus is on feeling the vibrations in different parts of the body as you produce the sound and this technique is actually done in group in a hall in a lying down position so we assess their anxiety level and their cognition through a simple uh, pen paper and pencil task before and immediately after the 30 minutes of the msrt technique session and uh, what we observed was that their state anxiety means the anxiety at that moment significantly reduced in people suffering from generalized anxiety disorder and also when people are anxious they tend to make more errors so the number of errors on a digit letter substitution test reduced so people became calmer and their ability to perform also improved so this is another research that we have done this uh, researches have been published now the uh, both the researches have been published in international journal of yoga oh mm-hmm. i that's so interesting that the it was done in a group setting yeah um do you have any insights or any theories about why it would be uh the effects would be different in a group versus in a doing a practice on one's own see scientifically speaking uh, there is a phenomena that was explored it is known as the the uh, the potentials that are generated through the brain the energy there are some researches in the parapsychology also which says that when people do it together okay the similar areas of the brain get more activated okay so in a group the effect gets enhanced especially when you are dealing with sound vibrations in physics also there is a known phenomena of sound resonance so resonance in the same frequency if two sound waves meet they produce a phenomena which cannot be explained by simple addition it is much more bo- much more beyond that so similarly uh, with this uh, sound resonance technique when we did it in the when we do it in the group the vibrations that are produced in the body in different parts of the body are much higher than a person doing alone so probably that may be the reason though we have not scientifically actually tested the sound waves and this thing but this is the principle that we are applying mm, yeah well from a from a subjective point of view it is easily observable that Correct. when you chant mantra or when you sing together with other people that it feels stronger than when you're doing it alone but yes. I, i think we'd all be very curious to know if uh, if there is a study done on that so you please let us know yes so i am um, not aware of a study which has compared the chanting of the sounds in individually versus groups but this is a good idea that we can mm-hmm. pursue further in our research so i'm i'm curious to know you know from your point of view being both a uh, phd in yoga as well as a medical doctor and researcher 
What is your vision for the future of health? both physically and mentally, or any, by any other measure that you would like to include in your definition of health? So thank you for this uh, very important question. Health, as WHO says, physical, mental and social dimensions are there, but now spiritual dimension has also been added. And this dimension I feel is a very fundamental and important dimension because health does not end at a place where there is absence of disease because even if there is absence of disease there is a long way that a human evolution should go ahead so from the disease to health and from health to positive health so that journey of wellness uh, spirituality plays a very very important role so now as i see the health in future, I see that uh, in the disease area, there will be integration of the modern science with the ancient sciences together. Already so many centers are opening up over the globe. So we will have the best of the knowledge that is available in yogic dimension, Ayurveda, even traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, whatever that humanity has best to offer would be taken. Tibetan medicine is also good. And then the science and technology uh, in modern medicine also would be useful. In emergency, there is no alternative than, a, than modern medicine. But in chronic lifestyle disorders, we need such approach so that we can have a holistic way of looking at a disease and dealing with it. So I see that in future, integrative medicine will become a forefront area in medicine. And I also see that countries will, will put more and more emphasis on prevention. So there will be promotion of health and prevention of mental and physical disorders by promoting wellness through this yogic kind of lifestyle promotion that we are doing through Nada Yoga and all these kind of principles. So I really uh, uh, thank for giving me this opportunity and I also wish my good luck to this wonderful initiative that, that you are doing. Thank you so much. Oh, my God.